What's happening folks, let's talk about zeroing pistols or confirming point of aim, point of impact with pistol sights, okay? First of all, we gotta take the human factor out of it, okay? Um, you gotta do something to stabilize the pistol. Um, you can, I would, you could rough some guns in, you know, uh, standing and uh, absolutely should spend a little bit of time in your training you know, putting that kind of focus on keeping the sight still as you're, you know, pressing triggers without moving sights, you know, the basic core of marksmanship there. But when it's time to really zero the pistol and, and confirm things and, and have some truths, you need to take all of the human factor out of it. So what I've got going on right now is some pretty easy stuff you should be able to find or put together at a range anywhere, okay? This is just a, a plastic barrel, 55 gallon barrel, you, use, you know, bound to be some tables or something around, but generally on ranges, there's some of these things around there. I've got an ammo can and a small sandbag that I use for the, the rear of rifles there. Um, that thing being a little bit softer there, we can kind of cradle the pistol in there and get a little bit more stability. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and mount this thing up and take a look at doing it with some iron sights there. Things to be aware of um, as we're sandbagging uh, pistols in, you, know, you want to keep that muzzle kind of clear of the sandbag, the front of the sandbag there, so that you know the um, you know the overpressure and the blast coming out of the end of the muzzle there doesn't burn a hole through your sandbag. Okay, it's, it's a thing, all right? So, um, get the pistol kind of stabilized. I've got the, um, you know, the front of the gun stabilized up there on the uh, ammo can and the sandbag. I've got my elbows, or my forearms in this case, rested down on this barrel here and creating some stability back there on the back end. And I'm looking through the sights and that's, that's how we know if we have stability. If you look through the sights and the sights are sitting still on the target, you have stability. If the sights are moving around, you don't have stability and you need to work on creating some more points of contact to create that stability. So once you have good stable sights, press triggers without moving sights, I would definitely recommend before you get started, um, do a little bit of that in dry fire and just kind of confirm, you know, and refresh, you know, clean trigger manipulation. Um, now let's talk about our target. You know, I'm, I'm zeroing out there at 25 today and I like to use three by five index cards for iron sights. Um, let's talk about um, some specs and whatnot, and some things that, that, that happen and can happen. Um, first of all, group size. If you're shooting at 25 yards and you have a five or six inch group, you don't have a group. You don't, you don't have any truth there. You can't confirm that your pistol is zeroed or that your sights are point of aim and point of, point of impact if you're shooting five to six inch groups or bigger at 25 yards. At 25 yards, we need to be talking two to three inch groups with iron sights. With a, a dot on the pistol, you're able to see a little bit smaller, so we should even be able to shoot just a little bit smaller than that, probably two inches and smaller to really zero a dot, okay? But to zero iron sights, um, I'd say two to three inch size groups are a good place to start, okay? Anything bigger than that, you need to work on your marksmanship abilities, stabilizing the gun, and get a better group before you start evaluating what you need to do to adjust sights, or if you need to change sights, or if you need a different height, front sight, et cetera. All right? So, um, things to notice about iron sights, or to know about iron sights, um, and zero in them. I designed my sights with a 117 thousandths wide front sight. Okay, the whole premise behind my sights are speed and accuracy with less room for sight misalignment. If, uh, if we have a really wide front sight, like we do a lot of times on uh, night sights or whatever, that covers a lot of target. And typically, those types of sights are designed for a six o'clock hold. Like, and what that means to us is if we wanted to hit there with sights that were designed for a six o'clock hold, you have to put your sight picture down here, and that's where the bullets are gonna hit. The way my mind is wired, and um, I definitely believe in, and it's an easier thing for shooters, is we see sight, we see what we wanna do. We see the target, we can see the sights, they're on the target, let's press triggers without overthinking it and let it do. Um, so that, you know, the way my mind works and the way that concept works is that's what we wanna do, that's what it takes to happen, or to make it happen. We see those two things and then we let it do. If we have to think about holding the sights under or over, that slows down that process and potentially puts some, uh, the potential in there that we don't do that, okay? And we, we lose, lose the opportunity to score some points. So that's why I designed them to be point of aim, point of impact, so we don't have to hold under or over. Now, 
in order to do that and not cover up a lot of target, we make the front sight a little bit narrower. And this is not a new concept. It's been out there in competitive shooting for a while. It's a little cold, so I'm trying to keep my hands warm. Um, so, you know, um, I've shot 115,000 wide front sight competitively for a long time. When I had my sight spec'd out, the way the manufacturing worked out, ended up being 117,000 wide. So that's plenty durable for, for any kind of, you know, for gunfighting kind of use and, and, and the stuff you're going to put them through in competitive shooting, but still small enough that it doesn't cover a lot of target at 25 yards. Um, now, what it does look like though at 25 yards with 117,000 wide front, if that's a three by five index card, that's kind of what the front sight looks like out there at 25 yards. It looks pretty much the same size. So what that tells us about zeroing and grouping with my sights or anything that size 115 wide or bigger is, you know, we got, really got to pay attention to sight alignment and sight placement to really get a, a, an accurate group, you know, a smaller group, and then, you know, know that that group really is point of aim and point of impact or if we're doing something wrong, okay? So rather than put, you know, this kind of in the middle of that uh, card because it kind of covers, covers it up a lot, what I would recommend doing for iron sights is hold either here hold your uh, you know, good side alignment and sight placement either down at the bottom of the card or at the top of the card and expect your group to be either at the top of the card or the bottom of the card. So if you held your sight alignment and you know, your sight placement was down here, good side alignment with this type sight placement, you should expect a group, you know, probably a two to three inch group right about here. And if you hold up on the top of it, expect that group up there, okay? So that's some things that I discovered for myself as I was kind of, you know, testing and developing sites. Um, those things that I probably had overlooked before and how I zeroed guns or confirmed point of aim and point of impact. Uh, what I used to do was, you know, at 15 yards, I'd put an index card up and stand and shoot freestyle. And if everything landed inside the index card, I was good with that and considered those sites point of aim and point of impact. And that's pretty good for the, the bulk of what we're going to do with pistols, and especially uh, with iron sided pistols. When I designed my sights and started testing them and really wanted to refine and make sure the product that I was putting out there was truth, you know, I started looking for, you know, a little bit more precise point of aim. So that's when I discovered that, oh, wow, you know, this 117,000 wide front sight is as big as a three by five index card at 25 yards. Um, so I started doing that. I also noticed um, with, you know, sight misalignment, how much of a difference that makes when we're zeroing and grouping. Um, the serrations on my sights are 50 lines per inch. So that's, that's pretty small. It's probably five thousandths so, or five thousandths of an inch or so in between serrations. If I misalign the sights by one serration, high or low, it meant two inches in the difference of point of impact out there, okay? Um, so something to be aware of as you're zeroing your guns. Now, and if we talked about this yet or not, yeah, we did. We talked about stabilizing the gun. So that's in addition to, you know, get the gun stabilized and then pay attention to how you're placing sights. Um, so that kind of covers a lot of things there. Um, what size target to use. All that said um, about iron sights there, I would probably recommend, you know, if you're really going to be confirming point of aim, point of impact, um, and or zero in the gun, probably do it a little bit closer, probably about 15 yards, maybe 20 yards, according to how well you can see, you know? We gotta be able to see that smaller point on the target to be able to aim there and to be able to, to shoot smaller groups. Um, so with iron sights, 15 yards, maybe even 10 yards, kind of based on your vision, um, should maybe even a little bit better place for you to zero and group those things. Now, moving on to dots, okay? Get that pine straw out of the way. So I'm shooting a uh, Leopold uh, Delta Point Pro with a two and a half MOA dot. When we're zeroing with the dots, whether that be iron sights or you know, dots on a rifle or dots on a pistol, when you're zeroing, adjust the intensity of the dot down, you know, really small, as small as you can get it, but still be able to see it. Um, it'll be dimmer than it would be when you're actually shooting the gun and trying to perform with it, but that the dimmer you get it, the smaller the dot is, or gets, allows you to see a little bit smaller, aim a little bit smaller, shoot a smaller group, and get a better depiction of what your point of aim and point of impact is and what you need to do to adjust to get your zero 
spot on so that when we see what we want to do and we see what it takes to make it happen and let it do, you know, if that's where the dot is, that's where the bullet's going to go. Not, oh, well, if the dot's there, the bullet may go there or there or there or there. Okay. So zero a little bit smaller or, or you know, adjust the, the intensity on that dot down a little bit to make it easier for you to zero. Um, in theory, that two and a half MOA dot at 25 yards would be you know, a little bit under three quarters of an inch. Um, in theory, okay. Um, but you know, when you adjust the brightness of that thing up, it'll get huge uh, and cover up a lot of the dots. So what I've got going on out there at 25 uh, on an index card, you can use a piece of um, white copy paper or whatever there. But I drew out with a marker, drew out a square. This one's about an inch and a half square and kind of bold on the edges there. I prefer to leave the, the inside of the square open versus having it you know, all the way blacked out. Uh, that allows me to kind of center the dot up in there. It gives me another, another way for the eyes to kind of refine that point of aim, okay? Um, that's about what it looks like right now with the dot dialed down on intensity where it's not quite so bright on the, an inch and a half kind of square out there at 25. That's about what my dot looks like. If I crank the dot up to the brightness that I would shoot it, you know, if it was time to shoot a match or something out here, um, or, or train for performance, that dot would get about this big, which would be great for shooting a performance and be able to see in the dot, or be able to see the dot fast, but to, to zero, not so good. We need a, a more refined point of aim. Well, folks, I don't know really what else to say about that. We talked about stabilizing the gun, talked about some really easy ways to do that. Definitely dry fire uh, before you start shooting live. When you're stabilizing the gun, make sure that you're, you're keeping the muzzle away from your sandbag so you don't blow holes in your sandbag. Um, and you don't have to, you know, you won't be shooting holes in it. It'll just be the, the blast coming out of the front of the gun that will cut holes in your sandbag. So if you'll keep the muzzle clear of that thing, that'll help you out and make your sandbag last a little bit longer. Um, yeah, um, group size with, uh, with the, the dots, you know, looking back at that, I'd say probably, you know, two inches or smaller is what we're capable of doing, you know, um, you know, with iron sights, you know, two to three inches smaller would be great but if you got a five to six inch group with iron sights or with a dot you don't have a group all right folks that's enough for now we'll catch y'all next time